Since the beginning of civilization, the world has been full of unknown things. Due to their existence, the balance of mankind's peaceful life has been upset. However, no matter how advanced our technology, no matter how great our scientific breakthroughs, there will always be anomalies that cannot be explained. We don't know where they come from or what their purpose is. These questions plague mankind and affect our daily lives. It's because of this that we founded the SCP Foundation, an organization dedicated to containing anomalous items, individuals, and phenomena. The SCP Foundation is committed to maintaining the normalcy of the world so that people may live free of fear. While ordinary people live in the sunlight, we must fight anomalies in the shadows. We must prevent them from being exposed to the public so that people may live in a rational and ordinary world. We secure. We contain. We protect.
Jason Carter is a death row inmate. In exchange for clemency, he has agreed to work with the SCP Foundation for 30 days. Upon completion of his work, he will be a free man. Jason Carter is now D503. D-503 was given no clear instruction of the task to be completed. He must find them out for himself.
This was D-503's first day of work. SCP protocol mandates that D-503 now undergo a psychological evaluation. This was the first day D-503 psychological data was collected. You're probably wondering, how can this job earn freedom for a death row inmate? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Raymond Hamm from Site 83. Welcome to today's training conference. Today, I'm going to share with you a little project I've been working on called SCP-7457. The desert you saw just now is SCP-7457. D-503 is a volunteer who we invited to help us learn more about this desert. Prior to the Foundation's involvement with SCP-7457, 329 people went missing in this area. As a precaution, we have introduced lockdown measures as we attempt to find the cause of these disappearances. As everyone here is new to the Foundation, it will be good for you to learn about SCP-7457. Let me explain how it works. Before we get started, are there any questions? Dr. Ham, I'm Will Barton. 3rd Special Squad, Site 86. Hello, Will. Before I came here, I thought I had a basic understanding of the Foundation. I've heard of these anomalies, but only in terms of human anomalies. I had no idea that SCP-7457 was a desert. How do we begin to make sense of this? That's a good question, Will. All the unexplained phenomena we are monitoring are being labeled anomalies. Human anomalies regional anomalies, artifact anomalies, and various other phenomena beyond our control. The work of the Foundation is to isolate these anomalies and prevent the public from, shall we say, experiencing them? Okay, next question. Hello, Dr. Hem. I'm Mark Harris, a research intern from Site 27. In a video, we saw D-503 picking up garbage in the desert. Why did it do that? And what does this have to do with anomalies? Okay, Mark. What I can tell you now is that everything you see is part of SCP-7457. SCP anomalies can be a little difficult to understand at first. Just know that it, or they, have their own rules. Perhaps you'll understand what I mean once we finish watching the video. Okay. Let's move on. The first week was fairly normal. However, there was an interesting occurrence on the eighth day.
Let's have a look at what happened. That night, D-503's psychological data showed abnormal fluctuations. Analysis tells us that D-503 is true. Unfortunately though, we have no way of knowing what he dreamed of that night.
The eighth day marked a significant turning point, the start of SCP-7457's impact on D-503. Are there any questions before we go on? Hello, Dr. Ham. I'm Spencer Jones from the Special Operations Department of Site-21. Hello, Spencer. It's still unclear as to why D-503 needs to pick up all of this trash. If you wanted to monitor his psychological response to SCP-7457, why not just leave him out in the desert? Why assign him these tasks when there are already psychological evaluations taking place? Okay, our analysis has indicated that SCP-7457 produces a new cluster of trash every 8 minutes and 37 seconds. If waste collection is not done regularly, all that trash may soon flow into our world. It is worth noting, though, that the quantity of waste created here pales in comparison to the amount produced by humans. However, it still has the potential to become a significant problem in the future. By assigning these tasks to D-503, we can monitor his reactions while also containing the trash. There is another reason, but we will get to that one later. Is it not the case that the Foundation is exaggerating the importance of a minor issue before the issue is fully understood? Okay, everyone. I must emphasize that behind us is the general public, who are wholly unaware of any of this. Being meticulous and maintaining a serious attitude is essential at the SCP Foundation. Any oversight or underestimation of the enemy may result in disaster. Thank you, Dr. Ham. I understand. Good. Let's move on. The effects of SCP-7457 on D-503 became most obvious on day 15 of the test. Due to the conditions that day, we were only able to track his movements after recovering data from his radar. It was definitely a bad day. Perhaps the worst. Even for a death row inmate. D-503 found a radar that perfectly resembled his own. However, D-503 didn't seem to think much of it. Persistent adverse physiological reactions proved to be a challenge for D-503. He still managed to complete his work on day 15. But then he encountered an incident. A sandstorm. D-503 walked in the sandstorm for a long time, but he couldn't seem to find his way back.
own voice. <gasps> Approximately 13 hours later, a visibly trembling D-503 returned to Site-8. We immediately performed a psychological evaluation. Major fluctuations can now be observed in D-503's physiological data. Results of the psychological evaluation were so troubling, we had to abort the mission. D-503 was able to break away from the Foundation's control. He has seen the test results of other levels of personnel who were analyzed at SCP-7457. That's right, none of the Level D personnel at SCP-7457 have ever been able to leave this desert.
later, experiment participant D-722 found the radar that had belonged to D-503. The radar was 31 miles away from the waste treatment facility. All the data we have came from this radar. People entering SCP-7457 will suffer varying degrees of psychological stress within an acute period. It manifests as a range of neurological and mental disorders, as well as severe and unexplained hallucinations. So far, not one participant has left the desert unscathed. The Foundation has tested 31 Level D personnel in an area spanning 2,267 square miles. Our testing continues. When you work for the Foundation, you will face various anomalies. Some can kill you, some may drive you crazy, and some will make you feel that living is worse than death. Let this be very clear. SCP-7457 is just a taste of what you will face in the future. Before joining the Foundation, you were all leaders in your respective fields and industries. Researchers, special forces, FBI agents, national security experts. Well, SCP does not care how smart you are, how accomplished you are. It doesn't matter to them how many doctorates and titles you have. You are no different from helpless ants when confronted with these anomalies. Remember this. It is the most important advice you will receive. Do not take risks. You will die. You are not as special as you think you are. If you encounter an anomaly, put your pride and curiosity aside. Run. Because that's the only thing you can do. God won't protect you here. <sighs> Welcome to the Foundation, rookies. I'm Dr. Raymond Ham, and this ends the first class of our employee induction program.
<clears throat> I'm Agent Q from the Accident Investigation Department. Containment breach occurred at Pony Station and contact with the Foundation has been lost. Agent Bella Lawrence was given orders to enter Pony Station and retrieve the black box. Following is a transcript of the interview with Bella Lawrence. <laughs> 